Welcome to live coverage of the installation of Monsignor Lawrence Persico as the 10th Bishop of the Erie Catholic Diocese. Today's broadcast is made possible through a partnership with Gannon University, Cathedral Prep, Villa Maria Academy, and the Catholic Foundation. From the studios of Jet 24 and live from St. Peter Cathedral in downtown Erie, here are your hosts, Jet 24's Sean Lafferty, Monsignor Tom McSweeney, and Father Ted Marconi. Good afternoon and welcome to our live coverage of the ordination and installation of Lawrence Persico as the 10th Bishop of the Erie Catholic Diocese. Joining me here in the studio is Monsignor Tom McSweeney, currently the pastor at Holy Trinity Church here in Erie, also served as an analyst on numerous national broadcasts. We are privileged to have Monsignor here now to help with this afternoon. It's a privilege event. to be with you too. This is going to be an exciting day. Welcome, sir. <laughs> also joining us live from St. Peter Cathedral, Father Ted Marconi. He'll be our eyes and ears inside the cathedral this afternoon as we continue our coverage. Uh, Monsignor, I want to talk to you a, a bit about the significance of the day. First time this has happened in 22 years. Um, let's talk about what this means, this, this changing of the guard. This is a changing of the guard. We've had such exceptional leadership for the last 22 years. And Bishop Troutman, of course, now has retired. And we have a young man who is willing to come in, 50-some years old, but he's willing to take on the challenges. It's a tough job being a bishop, but he's come here with a full heart and, and an open spirit to come to our diocese and serve us as our new shepherd. But as the events unfold today, we see other significant features. We see bishops coming from Ohio, coming from New York. We see the uh, papal nuncio coming all the way from, well actually he's stationed here in Washington DC, but he's basically the Vatican's ambassador. He will be reading a letter from the Pope. So we get our connection with the church universal while we celebrate the, the renewal of our own diocese and its leadership is going to be intact. We will continue our discussion all afternoon. I'm looking forward to it, Monsignor. Again, welcome. Thank you. Uh, we also want to welcome our audience worldwide, watching on our website, yourerie.com, where the entire ordination is streaming live. Let's now take a look live inside St. Peter Cathedral in downtown Erie. It'll be a building filled with dignitaries from inside and outside the Catholic Church. Father Ted Marconi has been there for much of the afternoon. Father, set the scene for us right now, if you could, please. Okay, I understand we're having a little trouble with our communication with Father Ted Marconi. We'll get back to him as quickly as we can. Of course, the man of the hour is Bishop-elect Lawrence Persico, the 61-year-old hailing from the Diocese of Greensburg, is about to become only the 10th person to ever hold the title of Bishop of the Erie Catholic Diocese. I had a chance to sit down with the bishop-elect as he arrived in Erie last week and talk about the job ahead, beginning with what it's been like to wait for this day. I'm the type of person I want to get, get started, get moving, and uh, I'm anxious to do that, to get out among the people, to start meeting more of the people of the diocese, to visit parishes, to get to know the clergy of the diocese, because it's a whole new family. And um, waiting around just prolongs that, what I want to do. As he prepared to retire, Bishop Donald Troutman said it was time for new ideas and a fresh start. But the bishop-elect says job one will be listening and learning. I can't come here with a preconceived plan, even though is you mentioned that Bishop Trotman said new ideas, fresh start. Well, it would be rather presumptuous of me to think that I have the plan and the fresh start without hearing what we need to do and what direction we need to go in. I assume that you have spoken to Bishop Troutman at some length uh, in the time uh, since yes, you were I named. Have. Yes, uh, what, what advice ha has he given you? No, Bishop Troutman has been very kind. He, he's, he's told me about how supportive the people here are in Erie, in the diocese, um, how much he loves the diocese of Erie and the people. And he hasn't really given me, well, you should do this or do that. He's been kind enough to let me find out on my own. Turning to some of the issues facing the church, we began with the sexual abuse scandal and the bishop-elect's job as the delegate for clergy sexual abuse in the Greensburg diocese. Well, I would deal with the uh, victims 
of uh, clergy sexual abuse. When the calls would come in, I would take them, I would speak with them, and then I would do the investigating of them. And it, it's, it's heart-wrenching to hear their stories and how they were. It, it, it's it's the one of the most scandalous times when you have to sit there and listen. And also, you have to, you're the recipient of their anger. Now, they're not angry at you as an individual, but of what you represent. They've been betrayed. How do you, uh, how does the church, and I guess you as now the leader of the Erie Catholic Diocese, uh, restore uh, any of the faith that has been lost? I think the first thing is, is to admit that it happened, to sincerely apologize for it, and to try to bring about healing for those who are willing to accept it. Regarding the lawsuit over the birth control mandate in the Affordable Care Act, the Erie Catholic Diocese is part of that lawsuit and will continue to be under Bishop Persico. The health mandate, I think, is the first step to a gradual wearing away of our rights. And unless we take a stand and do something to guarantee our rights, then I think they will just gradually be worn away. That's the issue. It's First Amendment rights more than other. They always want to make it look like it's abortion or birth control. But the, the big picture here is First Amendment rights. And finally, what about Lawrence Persico? Not so much the bishop-elect, but the man. If you were to tell the people of the Diocese of Erie what their next bishop is like as a person, um, describe yourself. He's really a nice guy. <laughs> A little self-serving, huh? <laughs> um, That's okay. Uh, basically, what you see is what you get. I'm interested in people. I enjoy pastoral work, and I—I—I uh, I, I guess you know what I could say is uh, I'm just basically a pastor, and that's who I am. As we look live at St. Peter Cathedral, Monsignor McSweeney, I want to get your reaction to what you just heard from Bishop-elect Persico. Well, what we heard there, Sean, is a man of extreme candor. He's so willing to speak directly to the issues as you placed questions to him about the sexual abuse scandal, about the mandate that's coming up. He, uh, he shows that he has a care for those people who are affected by those decisions, especially the victims. In the process of all that, he's telling us that he wants to be a listener, that he wants to learn from us in our diocese, what our situations in life are here. And that suggests to me a man who is a consensus builder. Someone, as he said, doesn't come in with all of the ideas and agenda. He simply is going to spend some time here getting to know us and to respond to our needs. And he says he's going to respond to those needs as a pastor. Mm -hmm. This is a man who has been a pastor of a church. I'm a pastor of the church. Anybody who's been a pastor of any religious faith gets a bond with his people and or her people if it should be uh, of, a, of another faith where there are female ministers. But the, the idea of him being a pastor I think is going to be foremost. His motto says that it's in truth in love, that I will speak the truth always. I'll be a champion for the truth, but I will always do that with love. And it's going to be a pastor's love for each one that he meets. Yeah, and I, and I think, um, you know, when you use the word uh, candor, uh, that is exactly what we got uh, out of the uh, bishop-elect when we sat down and spoke with him. Uh, he answered questions directly. He answered questions in short answers. Um, he was clearly uh, interested in, uh, as you and I spoke earlier, in, in listening, uh, maybe even more than talking. Yes, well, you know, and, and of course he's, he, in a sense, as media people here, we find him to be a, a media person's dream because he speaks <laughs> succinctly, not around the thing, right. but right to the issue, and then he leans forward and waits to have to hear what you have to say. Well, it's wonderful. It is, it, you know, it is, and it was a great chance to sit down and talk and meet with him. Uh, let's head down to St. Peter Cathedral now. Uh, Father Marconi, as you listen, listen to the bishop-elect, what stood out uh, for you? What impressions do you come away with? Well, 
uh, we're delighted to be here. We're, uh, we're first of all excited that we have an Italian coming to Erie. Uh, very excited we have an Italian. And let me tell you, the, the, uh, the excitement here, downtown Erie, is uh, you can feel the excitement. We've got kids lined up here on the steps of the cathedral with me, ready to ring bells. We've got ambassadors from Gannon University, Villa, Prep, Mercyhurst students. Uh, people from all over the diocese are showing up here. Very excite, very exciting down here uh, at the cathedral. It is, it is, Father, and you, you can hear me all, all right uh, at this point, right? I can hear you. Yes. Okay. Now I assume that that line of, of youngsters, and we saw the Knights of Columbus, that that stretches uh, all the way around the sidewalk and, and into that side parking lot, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, young people here. Uh, these are OLC, Our Lady Christian uh, students here. They're going to ring bells all through the procession. And uh, to my left are Villa students and Mercy Earth students and prep students. And got the ROTC uh, guard from prep is here as well. Uh, many groups represented from all over uh, the community and young people here. Yeah, fantastic sight, Father. We will check in with you uh, as the afternoon continues. Great sight there to see the, uh, the young people involved this afternoon. Bishop Donald Troutman has served the Erie Catholic Diocese as bishop for the past 22 years. Today marks the official end of his role as bishop, but today also marks the beginning of a new journey for His Excellency. Jill McCormick spoke with Bishop Troutman about his time as the head of the Erie Catholic Diocese and also his plans for the future. Well, initially, let's just say 22 years as bishop, that's quite some time. Um, during that time, what are some of the biggest changes you've seen with the church during your time as bishop in Erie? Well, the implementation of the Second Vatican Council, of course, the recognition of the change in demographics in the diocese in terms of our people, number of priests to deploy, and things of that nature. But I've always seen great faith in the good works of our people. And part of the thing I've always found so amazing is that there's been so many issues over the years with the Catholic Church, but it almost seems like the Erie Diocese has been able to kind of rise above that, and we haven't had as, as many issues as other dioceses have in the United That's States. That's true, and I think that shows the good support of all in my cabinet, my vicars, my leaders uh, who have shared the responsibility with me. I think we worked as a good team together. And uh, if there were problems early on, they were addressed immediately, corrected, policies put in place, and I'm happy with the record that we leave. Anything that you wish you had done or had accomplished during your time that you maybe didn't get around well, to? I think we always look back and say we could have done things much better if we had more time, more energy, more funds, more personnel, but we have to leave that to the Lord. Now, you've also been on the, the national spotlight, too, with some of the changes that have been made with Mass, and you've been integral in um, having some of those things change. Um, how important was your role in that for uh, not only the church, but the Erie Diocese? I think it was important. It did take me away from diocesan affairs for a time, but I was able on the national scene to be the chair of the doctrine committee and the chair of the liturgy committee for two sessions. So that meant six years being in charge of the liturgy for our country. And I think I represented the thinking of our people here as well at the national level and tried to, I uh, hope, bring honor and esteem to our people by representing those views. I championed the cause of inclusive language I try to champion a, a different translation and more inclusive uh, wording, a dynamic equivalence for translation. And I believe in those causes. I believe the majority of our people do. But we also implemented what was the final judgment call of the bishops regarding translation. So Monday comes. We have all of the celebration for the new bishop being installed. What do you do on Tuesday? Well, I probably will be at the bishop's meeting for the state of Pennsylvania, which will be held right here in this building. So what do you do on Wednesday? <laughs> on Wednesday, I'll be in my office probably trying to get caught up in the mail I should have answered several weeks ago. I think October is a very busy month for me. November may be a bit more relaxed. But I will still be bishop functioning and hopefully trying to help in the new bishop in adjusting to the 13 counties of our diocese. And you'll still be in Erie. You're not leaving. Yes, I, I want to go back again to John the Twenty-Third, who was the the Pope at the time of the Second Vatican Council, and he shocked the world by calling the Second Vatican. So you shouldn't write off someone who is seventy-six. Maybe there is some good energy in me that will come from our Holy Father John the Twenty-Third, and uh, 
we can imitate his views and, and bring the church to look at the signs of the time and guide our people. We need to read the signs of the time, not look in the rearview mirror. Well, and for those of us who have been lucky enough to have been in the diocese with you as our shepherd, we thank you. Thank and, you. And uh, we're grateful that you will be sticking around, and we haven't seen the end of you yet, correct? That is correct. With the Lord's help, I'll be here to be a shepherd and to help. Thank you very much. Thank you. Looking live once again inside St. Peter Cathedral at one of the many absolutely amazing, beautiful stained glass windows inside that cathedral. We want to mention uh, a lot of people coming together to make our entire community part of the special occasion. This broadcast is made possible through a partnership with Gannon University, Cathedral Prep, Villa Maria Academy, and the Catholic Foundation. Monsignor McSweeney, we just heard from Bishop Troutman. After 22 years of his leadership, as you look ahead, what will his legacy be? What will it become? I, to be sure, on the national scene, he drew a lot of attention to himself as a champion for inclusive language. He took it on the chops for, for being involved in some of those issues. He served on the doctrinal committee brilliantly for the Catholic Church at large here in the United States. But in terms of his local legacy, I think everybody can safely say he kept our diocesan house in order. We went through that uh, sexual abuse scandal. We've had to talk about schools closing. We've had to do parish realignments. And he championed and listened at the same time to create a house that has everything in order. So he, his legacy is he's passing that on to, to Bishop Persico. I, I'm thinking as he was closing off, uh, reminiscing about being a shepherd, and of course his motto was, feed my sheep. Right, I wanted to ask you he, about he that. Viewed, he viewed himself always as primarily having to be that, that good shepherd. And then he'd joke on occasion, and of course, and say, but you know, I'm a German shepherd. <laughs> so there were times that uh, I think in terms of the media looking at him, we, we seemed to hear that German shepherd bark on occasion. Mm -hmm. But the, the, there was no, no there was no severe bite. It, his, his heart has led us. He has been a good shepherd, and his legacy will be a diocese that has its house in order. Yeah, he definitely had to deal with a lot of issues in the last 22 years. There has been, there have been moments of, I, I don't know if it's the right word, but I'll use it, you know, chaos among the church overall in the last 22 years, and he has had to shepherd the diocese through that. Yes, he has. And, and again, um, 22 years is a long time to stay at that task. This, uh, this, this, uh, there was more than just a few bumps in the road here. But I, I, I want to say that he always uh, lifted his chin up high and, and faced the, the issues squarely. And as he said in that interview, sought out the best advice that he could. He was a consultative bishop and then would make his decisions and stick to them and be a champion for the truths of the gospel. And as we heard, we'll continue to work to help out the Erie Catholic yes, Diocese. You know, we were just looking at uh, some fantastic pictures inside St. Peter Cathedral. More than 1,100 families call St. Peter Cathedral their spiritual home. Construction on that magnificent cathedral began in 1873. It took 20 years to complete. David Belmondo brings us a look at some special features of St. Peter Cathedral. St. Peter Cathedral, a beautiful place of worship at West 10th and Sassafras. Land for this church at the time cost $13,000. Construction of this beautiful cathedral cost nearly $276,000, a sizable amount back then. But it took them 20 years because of finances to build the church. And if you look carefully on the outside, you see that parts of the stone don't match. The first layers are slightly lighter and then the next layer would be darker. And you can see it goes all the way around the building because it took 20 years to complete the job. But inside the cathedral are some real treasures from the huge marble altar to stained glass windows. The windows were redone in 1992-93. They were taken out, re-leaded, and prisms put into the windows. So when the light comes streaming in early in the morning, you get a real light show in here. St. Peter Cathedral is home to 75 relics, fragments of bone or tissue from a canonized saint. Now, at one time, the relics were contained in church altars, like the old altar in St. Peter. So our old altars always contained relics. And when the cathedral was redone in the 1990s, all of the relics were gathered from here, and some that were in other churches, 
and some privately possessed like this one, and they were put into this reliquary chest underneath the altar. It was sealed the day that the church was consecrated. So all 75 relics are inside there. Yeah, right. The relics of St. Peter and St. Paul are included in this collection. In the lower level of the cathedral, pretty much out of the public's eye, is the burial chapel of the bishops, or the crypt. The crypts hold the remains of Erie's second bishop, Joshua Young. He died in 1866 and was buried in an earlier crypt on the other side. <clears throat> bishop Tobias Mullen, the builder of the cathedral, is buried here. He died in 1910. And he was succeeded by John Edmund Fitzmorris, who came here He's a slightly older man from Philadelphia in 1898, was bishop here for 22 years. The remains of Bishop John Mark Gannon are also here, as are Bishops Edward McManaman and Bishop Watson. St. Peter Cathedral, the mother church for the 225,000 Catholics in the Diocese of Erie. David Belmondo, Jet 24, Action News. As you look live outside St. Peter Cathedral, you can see the procession, a large procession has already begun as folks head inside that beautiful cathedral. Father Ted Marconi joining us now live outside St. Peter Cathedral. Father, set the scene for us uh, and talk to us about who has gone in, who will be coming in. Uh, the procession has just begun. The Knights of Columbus have just led the procession in, followed by uh, Deacon David Renna. Da David will be ordained the first priest by the new bishop next spring, followed by the deacons of the church. Uh, deacons from all over the Diocese of Erie have joined us, and uh, they're heading on into the church, uh, followed by the priests of the diocese. Uh, the music has uh, picked up in the diocese, in, in the cathedral. Uh, the organ is playing, and uh, the cathedral is packed um, with people from all over the city, people from all over the diocese have come and uh, they're just very expectant and uh, looking toward the door here. Okay, Father, uh, if you could talk to me about uh, who is who is on the steps right now. Oh, I understand we have a communication issue once again. Hopefully we can go back and, and talk to Father Ted Marconi uh, very soon uh, as we look at these beautiful pictures outside St. Peter Cathedral as the procession starts to move its way in. And if we can come out uh, uh, to uh, Mons Monsignor McSweeney uh, and myself. Uh, uh, Monsignor, as we look at that, obviously things are uh, beginning uh, at the cathedral. Uh, it will be not too long now before the main event, if you want to call it that, begins. Uh, not too long as we look right now at some pictures live. Uh, not too long before we see the bishop-elect. Yes, indeed. Um, what we just mentioned was made of the, um, the honor guard of the Knights of Columbus. Uh, the most recent diocesan directory listed 62 councils of the Knights of Columbus through 13 counties of our diocese. So they're quite an addition to, to lead the way down that aisle. Um, they were founded back in 1882 to assist widows and their families and their membership has grown to 1.8 million, can you imagine? Wow. And so to have their presence here, we'd almost like to take the time to go through each element of the people that are going up there. Mention was made of the deacons. We have over 50 deacons in our diocese and they're all present here. Their wives are attending across the street watching, um, watching the thing on TV there. What a, what a tremendous addition they are to our diocese and what they help us do in terms of especially with our pre-shortage that's going on. But they are there en masse. And then of course you have the priests going in now of our diocese and um, they are all, as you can see, and Ted has aptly described, there's a great deal of excitement going on right now. Absolutely, and I understand we do have communication with Father Marconi once again. Father, uh, as, uh, as you heard, uh, the story of the cathedral play out just a couple of minutes ago um, and, and with you now being at the cathedral um, what is you know your impression of that that magnificent building and uh, as we prepare to celebrate this this great day uh, its role you know uh, watching all the priests come in right now is is pretty pretty exciting we've got the priest from the diocese of Erie priest from the diocese of Greensburg and uh, just being in, in the procession as, as a priest, uh, pretty expectant. I, I see great expectation on their faces, great joy as they're entering into the cathedral. Uh, there's a great solidarity with the priests of uh, the diocese, and it's great to have priests from other dioceses with us. Um, 
Uh, all of the priests, I, I don't know if you noticed, priests of the Diocese of Erie have the same stole on it. all has the, uh, the seal of the diocese. That was a gift from Bishop Troutman to all of the priests. And uh, that's a way to note who those priests are. But uh, yeah, they're, they're very excited to, to be here and be a part of this procession. Pretty historic day. Uh, just some of, of the overwhelming amount uh, of symbolism there is uh, in this day. Father Marconi, uh, thank you very much. We'll be checking back in in just a couple Absolutely. of minutes. Absolutely. You're As welcome. Bishop-elect Persico comes to Erie and joins the leadership of Erie clergy, other leaders we spoke to were eager to offer a warm welcome and words of encouragement, well-wishing and support. Bishop Persico, welcome to Erie. As a relative newcomer to Erie myself, my name is Tim High, and I have the privilege of serving as the interim pastor of the First Presbyterian Church of the Covenant. It is my hope and trust that as you arrive here, you will discover what Onesimus discovered when Paul sent him back to Philemon, that he truly could be useful and faithful in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Be well. Hi, my name is Derek Sanford. I'm the lead pastor here at Grace Church, and I just want to extend a very warm welcome to Bishop Persico. Uh, Erie's a great place to minister, and, and the good news is you can bring your terrible towel. It is Steeler country by most accounts, um, but the Catholic Church has been so involved and committed to uh, serving those in our city who are in need, and we've been a, a part of uh, some of that, and, and I just want to welcome you and look forward to working with you uh, as we serve this great community together. This is Rabbi Leonard Lifshin. Congregation Brith Shalom. Shalom and welcome. Welcome to Erie and welcome to your new pulpit. God bless you and keep you. May God lift his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God lift his eyes to favor you and bless you with wisdom and thoughtfulness and peace. My name is Pat Lennox. I'm the pastor at Glenwood United Methodist Church here in Erie. We want to congratulate you on your election as bishop and we look forward to working with you and the people of Erie and sharing God's love. My name is Father Theophanes Nakopoulos, uh, Samson Greek Orthodox Church. And all the bishops perform excellent mission in this diocese. I wish the new bishop follow the steps of the previous bishop, good for the diocese, good for the society of Erie. Welcome and God be with him and my always be in my prayers. Hi, this is Pastor Jack Reisner and on behalf of the community of faith here at Erie First Assembly of God, we want to welcome Bishop Persico to Erie and to the surrounding region. We really believe that no matter how broken your world is, the creator of this world has come to heal your brokenness. And we look forward to working with the bishop, with, with you, sir, as we together reach into this city to help heal broken lives and bring the grace of Jesus Christ to this city. As we look at the procession making its way inside St. Peter Cathedral, let's once again take the opportunity to thank the people who came together to make this event something that the entire community can take part in. Broadcast made possible through a partnership with Gannon University, Cathedral Prep, Villa Maria Academy, and the Catholic Foundation, Monsignor. Um, as we see uh, now, I believe the bishops uh, heading inside uh, the cathedral, correct? Just now, there they are, they're lining up. They're gonna be striking up the band, if you will, in the cathedral here with Ecce Sacerdos, Behold the High Priest. And it's going to be the entrance antithon of, of uh, Bishop Persico. Right now, they are, they're just holding up there and the music will start up. I wanna just say a word about what we just heard in that last uh, Absolutely. section about Absolutely. so many of the other religious leaders here in our diocese, and particularly here in Erie, to be able to share that enthusiasm with us as Catholics, as Christians, of course, it means so much. Uh, back to Bishop Murphy's time, he worked so diligently to create a true ecumenical feel in our diocese. And that was his legacy, which has been kept alive all the way through these last 22 years with Bishop Troutman. And indeed, it, it's so, so proud for each one of us to be able to celebrate this whole thing in its community significance of, with all faiths. Now we see the, the bishops again, of course, going in. They are of, of, of all variety here. We have 28, actually, when you count them up. But we've got them from Altoona, Johnstown, from Scranton, from Greensburg, from Philadelphia, of course, with Archbishop Chaput. 
We've got um, Bishop Malone from Buffalo. We've got Bishop McFannin from Harrisburg. And they are all coming in now and, of course, being led now uh, by uh, the assistance to the bishops. There's there, Bishop there, of Troutman, course, we see of Bishop Troutman, right. You know, and this absolutely is a who's who uh, of the Catholic Church in this part of the world, isn't it? It, it certainly is. And again, it, it, it demonstrates our collegiality with each other. We stand as one church and stand with Rome. This might be an appropriate time to mention something that is a little newsworthy. Poor Bishop Troutman woke up this morning with laryngitis and he's not going to be able to say all the things that he was going to say, and so we'll see some accommodation being done there. Now we see, of course, uh, Bishop-elect Persico, Lawrence Persico, the new bishop to be of Erie. As he came in with a little smile on his face, obviously an extremely exciting day for Bishop-elect Lawrence Persico becoming the 10th bishop of the Erie Catholic Diocese this afternoon. Let's turn now to the procession and the beginning of the Mass as it begins at St. Peter Cathedral. We will be joining you throughout the afternoon, throughout today's ceremonies, throughout the Mass. Right now, though, we want to send it to St. Peter Cathedral and the ordination and installation of Lawrence Persico as the Bishop of Erie.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Please be seated. My name is Monsignor Smith, and I serve as the Vicar General of the Diocese of Erie. Bishop Troutman has unfortunately come down with a touch of laryngitis, and therefore has asked me to deliver but a portion of his word of welcome to all of you, brothers and sisters in Christ. The bishop will close out the welcome in his own words. In the Lord's name and in the name of God's people in our 13 counties, I, the Bishop of Erie, Bishop Emeritus, welcome all of you to the ordination of the 10th Bishop of Erie. I welcome and greet Archbishop Vigano, representing our Holy Father, Archbishop Chapu, our Metropolitan Archbishop, brother bishops, priests, deacons, consecrated religious, ecumenical leaders, distinguished leaders of government and business, <coughs> seminarians, diocesan co-workers, family friends of our bishop-elect, the television viewers, all brothers and sisters of the Lord, and especially bishop-elect Persico. Our new bishop comes in Christ's name sent by the Bishop of Rome to be the Bishop of Erie. We welcome him with open arms and open hearts. The Book of the Gospels will be held over the head of Bishop-elect Persico during the prayer of consecration. This is a vivid sign of the Holy Spirit's presence and the power descending upon our new bishop, a sign that his life as bishop must always be under the word of the gospel. We pray in this ordination liturgy that the word of God will permeate his ministry. I thank Monsignor Smith for being my voice today and for all that he has done for our diocese. This day of ordination is also a day of transition. And I thank all of you, especially my co-workers in the ministry for your support and cooperation during the past 22 years. Give to your new shepherd the same loyal and faithful assistance you have given to me. This Bishop Emeritus, speaking of his successor, paraphrases the words of scripture. He must increase, I must decrease. And so I close with the words of St. Paul to the Corinthians. And now, brothers and sisters, I must say goodbye encourage one another, live in harmony, and may the God of love and peace be with you.
This is an extraordinary moment here for the viewers to behold. Uh, sustained applause. It, I can, you can almost feel palpably what the Bishop Trotman might be feeling. We had gotten word just shortly before the broadcast that he had lost his voice. Monsignor Smith, of course, uh, giving the message that he was to give. But the eloquence was held up by Brothers Bishop sisters, Trotman himself as he said goodbye. Sins. Absolutely. We now continue with the penitential rite where we all recall mysteries. our sins, those times that we may have sinned against our Lord by sinning against one another. And then we will go into the Kyrie and the Gloria will be sung. These are beautiful elements of our liturgy. And then you'll see the Roman Missal being Show brought to Lord Archbishop Chapu for the collect. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. abundance of your untold grace alone choose to set your servant and priest Lawrence over your church of Erie this day like if we go to grant that he may carry out worthily the office of bishop and under your governance in all things he may direct by word and example the people entrusted to his care through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We are now going to have the reading of sacred scripture, and the first to uh, proclaim is Sister Nancy Fisher. She's the director of Women and Religious in the Diocese of Erie, and she also directs the Office of Community Formation and Lay Ministry Training, as well as Christian Initiation. The reading is from Jeremiah. A 
reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me thus. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Ah, oh, Lord God, I said, I know not how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord answered me, Say not, I am too young. To whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Have no fear before them, because I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord extended his hand and touched my mouth, saying, See, I place my words in your mouth. The cantor this afternoon is Catherine uh, Kerner. She's been a cantor at St. Peter's Cathedral for about a dozen years, and later in the ceremony, she will also lead the singing for the Litany of the Saints. Now, the psalm that is about to be prayed in song is Psalm 89, with a response, forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord.
Now, Monsignor, as we uh, head toward the second reading, this holds special significance for the new bishop, doesn't it? Yes, it, it certainly does. It's uh, St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, and at the very end you'll hear proclaimed that living the truth in love, all of us should grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ. And this is the phrase, living the truth in love, which is on the coat of arms of the new bishop. Veritas in caritate? Indeed, precisely. The reader for us right now is Joseph Haas. He's the executive director of Catholic Charities and Adoption Services. Joseph Haas. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. I then, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers, to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the extent of the full stature of Christ, so that we may no longer be infants, tossed by waves and swept along by every wind of teaching arising from human trickery, from their cunning in the interests of deceitful scheming. Rather, living the truth in love, we should grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ. We now move to the, the reading of the gospel. We will see the incense and the thurible presented to Archbishop Chapu, who will charge the thurible, that is to fill it, and, and then the smoke will begin. This is a particular, really fine uh, gesture. The, the deacon will incense the book of gospels. Incense represents purification. It represents a sanctification. It's a symbol of our prayers literally rising to heaven. It's an image that's found throughout the scriptures, and of course we're going to see it again later in the liturgy today. But the Book of Gospels has an especially prominent role in the Mass during which a bishop is ordained. So we'll be seeing it again during the rite of ordination itself. Actually holding quite a, quite a prominent role uh, in, the, in the ordination and installation, correct? Yes, indeed. Um, we, of course, once we get after the, the homily itself, uh, and then the letters are written and, excuse me, read uh, as delivered from Rome, he will, in fact, then be the bishop. Your heart. The Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Gospel reading is from John 17, verse 6, 14 to 19.
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and prayed, saying, Holy Father, I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. I gave them your word, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I send them into the world, and I consecrate myself for them so that they also may be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It was interesting a few moments ago to see former Erie Mayor Joyce Savacchio. Of course, she was mayor the last time the diocese went through this change over 22 years ago. Uh, stature as well. And now they're going to sing Veni Creator Spiritus. Because what happens now is that the rite of ordination actually begins. And the choir sings this. It's Latin for Come Holy Spirit. And so we invite everybody now, no matter where they are, to pray with those who are in the cathedral that the Holy Spirit may be sent upon Bishop-elect Persico as he is ordained to the fullness of the priesthood as a bishop. On behalf of the Church of Erie, Monsignor Robert Smith, the Vicar General of the Diocese, will petition the Archbishop to ordain Bishop-elect Persico as the, the Bishop of Erie. And then the apostolic mandate, the letter from Rome, will be read. This is the official document that the papal nuncio, the papal ambassador, if you will, Archbishop de Gano, (coughs) brings to the Church of Erie, decreeing that the Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, has appointed Bishop-elect Persico to lead the Diocese of Erie. And then after he reads it, the people assembled in the cathedral will be asked to show their approval And then our Chancellor, Father Chris Singer, will show it to the College of Consultors as well as the people there present in the cathedral, and you'll hear their response. And of course, uh, the uh, the Papal Nuncio, uh, Bishop Archbishop Vigano, uh, significant in that he was the gentleman on the other end of the telephone who who told our new bishop that he had been appointed by the Holy. Well, there was the good Monsignor Persico enjoying a cup of coffee with his parishioners after Mass. The phone rings. And it's, um, it's Washington, D.C. It's the nuncio's office. Why is he calling me, says Lawrence Persico. And uh, lo and behold, it has all led to this day.
Most Reverend Father, the Church of Erie asks you to ordain this priest, Lawrence Thomas Persico, to the responsibility of the Episcopate. Have you a mandate from the Apostolic See? We have. Let it be read. Your Excellency, Metropolitan Archbishop Chaput, Your Excellency Bishop Trotman and Bishop Brandt, Your Excellency Bishop Elect Persico, my brothers, Archbishops, Bishops, dear priests, deacons, consecrated religious and lay faithful of the Diocese of Fieri. Dear brothers and sisters, to each of you, peace. It is indeed a joy for me to share with you this precious moment in the life of the Church in Hiri, and especially in the life of Monsignor Lawrence Thomas Persico, as he is ordained to the fullness of the priesthood and solemnly installed at the 10th Bishop of Fieri. Even more so because our celebration today takes place on the beautiful feast of St. Therese of the Child Jesus, Virgin and Doctor of the Church, <clears throat> and on the eve of the opening of the Year of Faith, a nuns by His Holiness, Pope Benedict XVI. In her autobiography, St. Therese, the Little Flower, reveals how, upon prayerful reflection, she came to understand that the Church had a heart, and that such a heart appeared to be aflame with love. I knew, she wrote, that one love drove the member of the church to action, that if this love were extinguished, the apostles would have proclaimed the gospel no longer. The martyrs would have shed their blood no more. I saw and realized that love set off the bounds of all vocations, that love is everything, that this same love embraces every time and every place. In one word, that love is everlasting. Your Excellency Bishop Elect Persico, May your faithful Episcopal ministry to the people of God in Erie and to the community at large stoke the fire of that love, which has enkindled the life of the Church down through the ages. As our Holy Father observed in his apostolic letter, Porta Fide, the door of faith, by which he announced the year of faith beginning on October 11, <clears throat> faith grows when it is lived as an experience of love received, and when it is communicated as an experience of grace and joy. It makes us 
fruitful because it expands our heart in hope and enables us to bear life-giving witness. Your Excellency, we sincerely thank you for answering the call to serve and to be assure you that of our spiritual support. And in a special way, I wish to acknowledge His Excellency Bishop Donald Trotman for his 22 years of dedicated leadership as the ninth Bishop of Erie and for his valuable service more recently as Apostolic Administrator. I will now read for you an English translation of the apostolic letter which His Holiness Pope Benedict XVI appointed Monsignor Lawrence Thomas Persico, Bishop of Hiri. Benedict, Bishop, Servant of Servants of God. To our beloved son, Lawrence Thomas Persico, from the clergy of the Diocese of Greensburg and Vicar General there, as well as pastor of St. James Parish in the town of New Alexandria, appointed Bishop of Erie, greetings and apostolic blessing. The solemn office of Chief Shepherd, which we exercise, <coughs> demands of us today, among other things, that we provide suitably for the Cathedral Church of Fury, which is currently vacant, owing to the resignation of our venerable brother, Donald Walter Trotman. Accordingly, you beloved son, and thou as you are, with the requisite qualities and pastoral experience, seem to us fit for governing, governing this diocese. For this reason, after consultation with the Congregation for Bishops, by virtue of our supreme apostolic authority, we appoint you Bishop of Piri, conferring upon you all the rights and obligations connected to this office. You may receive ordination from many Catholic bishops outside the city of Rome, the liturgical laws being observed. Prior to this, you will make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors in compliance with the sacred canons, being sure to forward the employed formulas to the aforementioned congregation. In addition, we mandate that this letter be brought to the attention of your clergy and people, whom we exhort to give you a warm welcome and to remain in communion with you. Finally, beloved son, we beseech for you the gift of the Paraclete Spirit, so that, headed by them, you may be able to nourish the faithful entrusted to your care by work, words, and especially by the persuasive appeal of your example, mindful of the dictum, he who teaches by deeds teaches best. <coughs> Furthermore, may the peace of the light of Christ, together with the protection of the Immaculate Blessed Virgin Mary, be always with you and with the Ecclesian community of Erie, which is indeed so very dear to us. Given at Rome, at St. Peter's, on the 31st day of the month of July, in the year of the Lord 2012, the eighth of our pontificate, Pope Benedict XVI.
Thanks be to God. Let the College of Consultors examine the apostolic mandate. Let the apostolic mandate be shown to the people. Archbishop Vigano, Bishop Troutman, Bishop-elect Persico, my brother bishops, brother priests and deacons, fellow religious, beloved seminarians, lay faithful of the Diocese of Erie, friends of Bishop-elect Persico. Although I think that the attention today needs to be directed at the Lord Jesus and at our uh, soon-to-be ordained bishop, uh, this is my first opportunity as the uh, Metropolitan Archbishop of Philadelphia to visit Erie, so I'd like to introduce myself to the people of the Archdiocese. Uh, first of all, why am I here? You know, I was appointed the Archbishop of Philadelphia just a little over a year ago, and part of the responsibility of an Archbishop in a metropolitan area is to be the ordaining bishop when new bishops were promoted to diocese. At least that's the custom here in Pennsylvania. So I was very honored when Bishop-elect Persico invited me to ordain him a bishop and also to preach at his ordination. Uh, it's a great privilege to be here and to be in such a wonderful diocese. This is not my first visit to Erie. Many years ago, I was teaching at a seminary south of here in Herman, Pennsylvania, near Butler, and every, not every Sunday, but quite often on Sunday, I would take a trip from Herman, Pennsylvania to St. Richard's Parish in Rymersburg, Pennsylvania to celebrate Mass. That's in the Diocese of Erie. I was the youngest priest on the faculty, and because of that, they sent me the furthest distance. <laughs> but I found the people in Rymersburg to be very warm and welcoming, and it gave me a taste of the warm hospitality that I've experienced here in these days of um, being back in the Diocese of, of Erie, Pennsylvania. And if there's anybody here from the parish of St. Richard's in Rammersburg, I especially greet you and ask you to take my greetings back to the people of that wonderful parish. Uh, as I was preparing for today, there were many things I wanted to say. And one of the things that came to my mind, as already has been mentioned by Archbishop Vigano, is that today is the Feast of St. Teresa of the Little Flower. Oftentimes, bishops, or men who are going to be ordained bishops, pick a day because of its significance for them. Sometimes, sometimes the day is picked because the nuncio is very busy and his schedule is the only day he can come. I don't know for, for why this day was picked, but it is a blessed day to be ordained a bishop. St. Teresa of the Child Jesus was a saint that most of us can love. She was young and innocent. She died when she was 24 years old. Uh, she was simple, didn't have much of an education, but she's considered a doctor of the church. And the reason for that is her way, as she described it, was the little way of holiness, doing the ordinary things of life in an extraordinary way. She once said, to pick up a pin, a pin for love can convert a soul. She joined the convent, she says, to save souls and to pray for priests. So I'm sure St. Teresa, the little flower, is with us today praying for you, Bishop Persico, and our prayers are joined to hers as we ask the Lord on this day to give you an increase of grace so that most of all, as you become a bishop, you will grow in holiness. 
and through that holiness lead us and your church more closely to Jesus Christ. I'd like to mention at the beginning of my reflections my deep respect for your, I think he's still your bishop for a few minutes, for your current bishop, <laughs> Bishop Troutman. He's been your bishop, he's been a bishop for 27 years, 22 years of that here in Erie, Pennsylvania. And he's much respected by his brother bishops. That's why they're here in such good numbers. And he's loved for his integrity and his courage. Bishop, the, your, the, your brother bishops here in the United States love and respect you very much. And we thank you for the good example you've given us in the service of being a bishop. But all of those present here, at least most of those present here, know you most of all as their father. You've ordained many of the priests and many of the deacons. You've been present in the lives of the faithful through the sacrament of confirmation and in so many other ways. The warm applause that was given to you um, at the beginning of Mass is a sign of the deep affection and gratitude that the Church has for you as you move towards a very active retirement. So once again, on behalf of the whole Church in our country, on behalf of the people of your diocese, we say thank you for your love and service. a minute ago, I had many things I want to say today, and I had to limit myself. So I, I came to the point of saying, what do I want to do? Do I want to give a homily that reflects the theology of the church about what it means to be a bishop? Do I want to focus more practically on what we're doing today in the ordination ceremony? And since it's been a long time since someone was ordained a bishop here in Erie, I think the last time was 1965, with Bishop Alfred Michael Watson 47 years ago, I think the best thing for me to do is to talk to the bishop and to all of you about the ordination ceremony and what it means. Because we celebrate in visible ways what our faith proclaims at this moment of Bishop Persico's ordination. The ordination ceremony takes place in the context of Mass. We've been formed once again by the word of God. God has been speaking to us in the scriptures, to all of us here in a very unique and special way, to Bishop Persico. But after I finish my homily, the church is going to ask him some questions. Not as an examination, but as a moment for him to express his faith and his commitment to the church. I will ask him, as the one chosen, the elect, to commit himself to his new bride, the Church of Erie. After those questions, we have the Litany of Supplication, which used to be called the Litany of the Saints, where we call upon the communion of saints to be with us in our celebration. You know, one of the things that Catholics know is that the reality of the world is much more than we can see with our eyes. As we celebrate here in this cathedral church, we are surrounded by the angels and saints in the heavenly court where they constantly worship God, the communion of saints. And in that communion, Bishop Persico, are your mother and father, your deceased sisters, the former bishops of this diocese, the laity who have loved and served God here, the religious women who have sacrificed their lives in the service of the Church of Erie, uh, your brother priests and deacons, so many people. And so this moment in history is in some sense a mere fraction of what is happening today because the whole Church of Erie through time, the Church Universal, celebrates the presence of God in this ordination celebration. After the Litany of the Saints, I will lay hands on Bishop Persico along with the bishops who are present here. And the laying on of hands symbolizes two things. The passing on of the gift of the Episcopacy to Bishop Persico, but also symbolizes the fact that in the laying on of hands, God consecrates him 
sets him apart in the life of the church for the work of God. The laying on of hands is a celebration that we see taking place in the Acts of the Apostles. So through history, through time, from generation to generation, bishops have passed on to the next generation of bishops the apostolic gift given by Jesus to the apostles of the church. So this moment is a moment in the history of our salvation where God is very present to us through the sacramental reality that we celebrate, the Holy Spirit giving your new bishop the gift of the Holy Spirit. As we lay, after we lay hands on the bishop, the book of the Gospels would be placed over his head as a sign that he will be enveloped by the word of God and that all of his life and service as a bishop is given to the service of God's word. Then I will pray the words of consecration, calling God's spirit upon him to join him to the College of Bishops as a successor to the apostles. And then the bishop will be anointed with chrism. Jesus Christ was known as the Messiah, which means the anointed one. Each one of us, when we were baptized, became God's anointed ones. We were anointed with the oil at our baptism. Each of us who had been confirmed was once again anointed with oil as a sign that we were further consecrated to God and to God's service. When I was ordained a bishop, my hand, well, a priest rather, as, a, as Bishop Persico was ordained a priest, his hands were anointed with oil as a sign that his hands were dedicated wholly to the work of God. When he will be anointed as a bishop, I will pour oil on his head as a sign that his whole being is now given to the service of God as a bishop. Bishop Persico, you will be marked as God's man in the service of the church, wholly given to the mystery of God's love. And then we have the external signs of what it means to be a bishop. He will be given a ring, which is a sign of his marriage to the church, that he's called by God to give himself as holy and faithfully to you as a husband gives himself holy and faithfully to his bride. It's a symbol of commitment and fidelity. After the ring, he receives on his head the mitre, a rather unusual hat, which is a symbol of his call to holiness, that he's supposed to be a sign of God's holiness in the midst of the church among his faithful people. After that, he is, he is brought to the chair in which I'm sitting, which is a sign of the Episcopal uh, uh, teaching authority that a bishop has. Now he will preside over the celebrations of the liturgy from this chair in this cathedral church, teaching the faithful in the name of Jesus Christ. After um, he's brought to the chair and we acknowledge his authority in this community, each of the bishops will come to him and embrace him as a sign of our welcoming your new bishop into the College of Bishops. We serve the church not only as individual bishops, but as a community of bishops in union with the Holy Father in the service of the entire church. And then after we celebrate uh, the, the union of the bishop to, the, to his brother bishops, um, at that moment in the ceremony, we go, we go on to celebrate the Eucharist, which is at the heart of a, of a bishop's ministry to share the Eucharistic body and blood of Jesus Christ with the community of the church. So those are the things we'll be doing. And we believe that Jesus is present not only in his word, but in the, in the sacramental actions of the church. And so as we act in his name, Jesus comes among us, sharing with your new bishop the gift of the sacrament of holy orders, which incorporates him more fully into the mystery of Jesus' Jesus' priesthood. He receives the fullness of the priesthood in the, in the heart and life of the church. Now, Bishop, I'd like to reflect briefly with you on the scripture readings which you chose for today. The first reading was from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, from the first chapter, which describes the experience that Jeremiah the prophet had of being called by God. Scripture scholars tell us that since he 
objected or, or, or said, I'm worried about this because he was a young man, that Jeremiah probably received his call when he was an adolescent, about the same time you went to the seminary, I think. But God told the prophet Jeremiah that he was chosen to be a prophet from his mother's womb, that he was created uniquely because of God's love for him. And after that call of love, God gave him a special and unique ministry in the service of the Jewish community. Bishop, at this moment, before your ordination as a bishop, I invite you to think of your own early life, the, the church from which you come, the Diocese of Greensburg, your mother and your father, the people who've loved you and the formation directors who have formed you. All of that was a, a sign of the presence of God's love, unique love for you. He has loved you from all eternity. He's cared for you. And he has planned in his divine wisdom that you be called to the service of the church as a bishop at this moment. What a wonderful privilege it is. God consoled Jeremiah by telling him that, that God would place his own words in Jeremiah's mouth. Not to be afraid, because God would give him the words to speak. That God would enable him to to truly represent God's word in the heart of the Jewish community. As the Lord embraces you, as you loan him your humanity once again in the, in the offering of yourself in the sacrament of holy orders, be assured that the Father will always care for you, he will love you, he will place his words in your mouth and give you the wisdom to generally, generously serve the people in whose care um, to whose care he's given you. Also, you need to remember that Pope Benedict XVI chose you to be the Bishop of Erie, the Holy Father, the successor of St. Peter, who helps us to discover God's plan for the church in our time. He didn't choose you ran randomly. He chose you specifically to be a bishop and to be a bishop here. The Holy Spirit was working in the decision of the Holy Father, which should give you great confidence that it's God's plan that you be the Bishop of Erie, Pennsylvania. The second reading from which you also chose your coat of arms is from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. And in the passage you chose, St. Paul called the people of Ephesus to a radical gift of themselves in holiness. That is a call that we all share through our baptism. All are equally called to be holy. But as part of God's radical holiness in your life, he's also called you to love the church uniquely. All of us here are called to love the church as our mother. Priests and bishops especially are called to love the church as our brides. And the way we love our mother is very different from the way we love our wives. Both loves are wonderful, both loves are generous, but each love is unique. The Church of Erie now, Bishop, is your bride, to whom you give the rest of your life and everything that you are. Love the Church as Christ loves the Church and gave his life for her. At the end of this reading, we find the words of your coat of arms, veritas in caritate, living the love in truth. Truth without love is harsh and brittle sometimes. Love without truth can be sentimental, indulgent, and false. In that um, saying for your coat of arms, you have, in some sense, called the church to see what you desire your ministry here to be, a time of serving the people of the Diocese of Erie in truth, which is characterized by love. We always remember, as Catholics, that for us, truth is a person, because Jesus tells us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. 
So when you love the truth and preach the truth, you love and preach the person of Jesus Christ and draw all of us into a deeper and firmer relationship with him. Finally, today's gospel is a passage from the gospel of St. John. And in that passage, Jesus prays for you and for those who serve the church as priests and as apostles. For the whole church, but uniquely for those who serve the church in those special ministries. What a privilege to be prayed for by Jesus Christ. Not only at that moment on the night before he died, but we know that every, at every moment of our existence, our lives are part of Jesus' prayer to the Father for us. And in that prayer, he prayed that you would be consecrated for truth. Again, the truth who is the person of Jesus Christ, who is your way, your truth, and your life. Today, I could have read the official instruction that's part of the ritual, but I chose to speak on, in my own words. But at the end of my reflections here, I'd like to share with you uh, the beginning of that instruction, Bishop Persico. The church invites the community gathered here in that instruction with these words. Beloved, consider carefully the nature of the rank in the church to which our brother is about to be raised. Lawrence Persico is about to be raised to a new service of the church through the celebration of the sacrament of ordination. What does it mean to be raised when you're, when you're ordained a bishop? We know that Jesus tells those who have office in the church are called to exercise that office as servants and to give their lives in the service of others rather than expecting others to give, to give their lives in the service of him. So to be raised in the church through the sacrament of holy orders cannot mean to be raised above the faithful or raised above the priests or raised above the deacons. So what does it mean when we say through a sacrament you're raised in the church? It means simply this, Bishop, that because the Lord Jesus has called you to be a bishop, he has raised you in the church that we might see you as a clear sign of the presence of Jesus Christ, servant and priest, in the life of the church. You have a greater obligation to love the Lord and to love his people than you've ever had before. And as you accept the gift of ordination, you're promising to be for us a clear sign of the love and presence of Jesus Christ. Our prayer for you as we gather around you as your brother bishops, as your brother priests and deacons, as the people who love you in this church, our prayer for you today is that the Lord might bring to completion the good things that he begins in your life today. Congratulations. Thank you. May you experience in our celebration now the presence and warmth of God's love. The ancient rule of the Holy Fathers ordains that a bishop-elect is to be questioned in the presence of the people on his resolve to uphold the faith and to discharge his duty. And so, dear brother, do you resolve by the grace of the Holy Spirit to discharge until death the office entrusted you by the apostles, which we are about to pass on to you by the laying on of our hands. I, I am. Do you resolve to preach the gospel of Christ with constancy and fidelity? I am. 
Do you resolve to guard the deposit of faith, entire and incorrupt, as handed down by the apostles and preserved in the church everywhere and at all times? I do. Do you resolve to build up the body of Christ, his church, and to remain in the unity of that body, together with the order of bishops, under the authority of the successor of St. Peter the Apostle? I do. Do you resolve to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed Apostle Peter? I do. Do you resolve to guide the holy people of God in the way of salvation as a devoted father and sustain them with the help of your fellow ministers, the priests and deacons? I do. Do you resolve for the sake of the Lord's name to be welcoming and merciful to the poor, to strangers, and to all who are in need? I do. Do you resolve as a good shepherd to seek out the sheep who stray and gather them into the Lord's fold? I do. Do you resolve to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for the holy people and to carry out the office of high priest without reproach? I do with the help of God. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Dearly beloved, let us pray that the kindness of Almighty God in providing for the welfare of the church will grant an abundance of his grace for this chosen one. Let us kneel. in the studio briefly. Uh, Monsignor, um, I, I think just about everybody may have noticed that as the litany of the saints began, uh, the bishop-elect um, was laying down on the floor as everybody was invited to kneel. If you could explain that a little bit. Yes, this is an, uh, a profound gesture indeed where bishop-elect Persico is lying prostrate on the very floor of St. Peter's Cathedral. And what it is, is a gesture of absolute surrender and all people are invited to petition the saints in heaven to join in prayer with Bishop Persico as he makes this act of surrender. 
as Bishop Chaput said so very well to the bishop-elect, you are now going to be a lover, as indeed you have been a lover, but you will love as you have never before loved. And to do this, you will need to give yourself over completely to the power of the Spirit in your life. And so you get this quality in this uh, invitation to petition the saints, uh, a beautiful kind of repetitive rite that's very conducive to meditation and prayer. So as Bishop-elect Persico is, is there prostrate on the floor, I can tell you, I think it's very safe to say in faith, that he is reviewing in his heart all those promises he just made to fulfill his role as a shepherd in the Diocese of Erie. One of those symbolic moments that means so much to this afternoon. Yes, indeed. And, and very shortly, um, the other bishops will present themselves to him and they will file through and they'll lay their hands on his head. Another, another gesture, of course. And we will see through all of these gestures that there is now that sense of collegiality. Where you are going, Bishop Persico, we have been, the other bishops say, and draw strength from us and the Holy Spirit as we lay our hands on you. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful feeling of solidarity with those who have gone before. As you said, accepting him as one of their own, at the same time inviting him to seek their help if he would like, right? There's that collegiality, and it goes all the way across Pennsylvania, it goes all the way to Rome. And uh, I think the, the, the way that the rituals have been explained so beautifully by Bishop Chapu gives us the opportunity to maybe just step back and, and listen to see this unfold. But right now, um, Bishop-elect uh, is on that floor reviewing in his own mind and heart all that has been, all that will be. God bless him. The saints bless him indeed. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless this chosen man. Lord, we O Lord, and pour out upon this your servant the power of your blessing, flowing from the horn of priestly grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand.
Okay. All right. Interesting moments. Yes, indeed. And all meant to be in absolute silence and reverence for the the bringing of the Holy Spirit, the, as we spoke earlier about the great camaraderie among the bishops and that solidarity. And now the deacon has brought the Book of the Gospels from the altar to Archbishop Chapu, and he's holding it open over the head of Bishop-elect, and the deacons will hold it there open while Archbishop Chapu uh, prays the prayer of consecration. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, who dwell on high and look upon the lowly, who know all things before they come to be, and who lay down observances in your church through the word of your grace, who from the beginning foreordained a nation of the just, born of Abraham, who established rulers and priests, and did not leave your sanctuary without ministers, and who, from the foundation of the world, were pleased to be glorified in those you have chosen. Pour out now upon this chosen one that power which is from you, the governing spirit, whom you gave to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, the Spirit whom he bestowed upon the holy apostles, who established the church in each place as your sanctuary for the glory and unceasing praise of your name. Grant, O Father, knower of all hearts, that this your servant, whom you have chosen for the office of bishop, may shepherd your holy flock, Serving you night and day, may he fulfill before you without reproach the ministry of the high priesthood, so that always gaining your favor, he may offer up the gifts of your holy church. Grant that by the power of the spirit of the high priesthood, he may have the power to forgive sins according to your command, assign offices according to your decree, and loose every bond according to the power given by you to the apostles. May he please you by his meekness and purity of heart, presenting a fragrant offering to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom glory and power and honor are yours with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, this moment holds very special meaning, right? It is precisely at this moment that Bishop Persico is now the bishop, the Bishop of Erie. And the deacons have taken away the book of the Gospels, and, and all will be seated. And then Archbishop Chapu is going to pour a chrism, an oil, over Bishop Persico's head, and he will pray. The, um, when he pours that oil, this chrism, on the head of the new bishop, all Catholics are, are reminded how they have been anointed with chrism when they were baptized. And it symbolizes the fact that